games. Thank you. You've got money? How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Give yourself a big round of applause for coming here on us talk today. Okay, so since today you came on a Saturday, I'm going to share with you some very important things, which is the first thing, global macro trading, okay? Then the second thing, gold market. How many of you, just curious, how many of you are beginner traders? Okay, cool, cool. Experienced traders? You see the thing, huh? When you're so good, they're still here. You know what I'm saying? So, millionaire traders? Okay, they're just being humble, okay? So, no matter what expertise you are at right now, you gotta keep on learning. Every single month right now, I'm still buying courses. Even back then, in my first year, when I was blowing a lot of accounts, in my first year, I lost a lot of money in my first year. I think like two, three thousand. In fact, I think more than that. More than that. And back then, I invested about $60,000 into courses, books, and then even right now, every single month, I'm still buying books. And also once a year, twice a year, I'm still buying courses. So, never stop learning, okay? One very important thing before I get into the story and all that, this is your notepad, right? This is your notepad. They gave you a free notepad, okay? So, along the way, can I invite you to write down notes? Is it okay? Yep. Is it okay? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because, my note is not working. Because, you see, because, <laughs> testing one, two. Testing one, two. Huh? No battery here. Eh? Huh? <laughs> Event. Event organizers, no battery. Testing one, two. Okay, they are trying to find the mic, they don't. Where was I? When you write down things, when you write down things, you remember things easier as compared to if you type. Studies have shown that if you write down things, you will remember things easier as compared to if you type it out. If you cannot, if you don't have enough time to, what do you call it? Write down, because sometimes I might go really fast because I only have 45 minutes, the event organizers only give me 45 minutes. If you don't have time to catch up, then you can take picture, then you go home. Okay, I know this is quite tedious. Write down on a piece of paper. Okay? Testing one, two. Organizers, could you give me a new mic? Okay. Okay, so... My background is my parents, they were stock investors. Ever since I was born, my parents, they are stock investors. So growing up, growing up, my parents talked a lot about the stock market. Even though I was very young back then, they always talked about oh, how the government is going to affect the stock market, this and that. What stock should I buy? What stock should I sell? Even though back then I wasn't that interested in the stock market. You know, primary school, kindergarten, that time, what do you normally do? Play, play what? Play games. You know, back then, back in my days, you know, we have what you call it, Nintendo Game Boy. Nintendo Game Boy, so I was interested in just that. Only in my late teens, early 20s, then I started to get interested in the stock market, following my parents' footsteps. If my mom decided to become, because she always told me, I want to become a flight attendant. If my mom went into the airline industry, or if my dad became, let's say for example, a pilot, I wouldn't be in trading, investing at all. I'd probably in, be in the airline industry, probably doing something related to airline, okay? So whatever that I'm sharing with you today, it's not meant for you to trade life, okay? Just understand that. Okay, so is it okay if we make this an interactive session? Okay, Ken? I want to ask you, what do these four people have in common? Just the first answer you think about, okay? The first answer you think about, you tell me. Stanley Drucken Miller, George Soros, Paul Tito Jones, Ray Dalio. What do they have in common? They're rich. They're rich, okay. Then some more? They're not broke, okay. Then some more? 
Again? Yes, traders. They are? Traders. Tra traders, okay. Some more? Investors. I heard somebody say they dress really well, okay. <laughs> okay, some more? Very old. Very, very old. <laughs> mm, okay, okay, okay. Then some more? They look smart. They look smart, okay. So if you look stupid, you cannot be a trader, investor. Okay, okay, so what else? Successful. Very experienced. Organizers, if you can give me a new mic, that will be good. Okay, because this one is kind of like airy. What's that? Just yes, now? Experienced. They are experienced, okay, good. Summer? Success. They are all men. They are all men, okay, okay. Men. <laughs> <laughs> all handsome men, then Summer? They trade. Um, macro, global, macro trading. Now here's the thing. Four of them are one of the, are the top ten richest hedge fund managers in the world. If you study their biography, I've been studying them since university years, okay? And then I realized that they all have one thing in common is that if you Google them literally, it says, oh, what's the George Soros strategy? What is Paul George strategy? Ray Dalio, he has two books just talking about economics. The biggest trades, the biggest money-making trades, especially George Soros, he broke the Bank of England, is using what? Macroeconomics. They look at macroeconomics. Now, how many of you studied economics in A-level? A-level or uni? Okay, a few, one or two only. You don't need to care about microeconomics because in economics there are two branches. The first one is macroeconomics, the second one is microeconomics. For traders and, it, and even investors, you look at macroeconomics. The way George Soros broke the Bank of England, he looked at economic factors. Economic factors. So for the past two years, I've been speaking in a lot of hedge fund events hedge fund manager events and then I realized that they all talk about one thing see if this works first huh? testing one two oh, okay okay they talk about one thing okay hedge fund managers institutional traders Always, every time I go there, I sometimes I teach bank traders the about the financial markets too. Okay, they talk about macroeconomics, economic indicators, central banks, interest rates. Very seldom, very seldom do they focus on technical analysis, which is what a lot of social media videos are talking about. Now here's the thing: a lot of retail traders, when you come into this industry, you wouldn't know the conflict of interest. Do you know what's conflict of interest? So let's say for example you go into you go into a clothing store today, okay? And then you wear a blazer. And you ask the salesperson. Now the salesperson is struggling to make money, okay? So whenever she or he makes a sale, he's gonna get a commission. So you ask the salesperson, so do I look good in this blazer? Inside the head is like, I don't think it suits you, but very nice. Very nice. This is the conflict of interest. Do you see that? Internally, people feel like, okay, risk management is the best thing for you. Trading psychology is the best thing for you. Macroeconomics, fundamentals is something you should focus on. But because a lot of beginner traders, retail traders, they like what? Trading strategy indicator, technical analysis. That is what sells more courses. That is what gets more attention to a guru. That is why you see on social media why it is so popular. Okay? Because if you understand what's going on behind the scenes, you realize that event organizers, a lot of so called event organizers, certain event organizers, they tell a guru, please, in my event, sell more courses when you speak here. Then we speak half. So the group go back home and think, okay, risk management is the most important thing, but what sells better? Technical analysis. So should I sell a technical analysis 
program or a risk management program if you are the guru? Technical analysis. Now, see, even you will sell technical analysis program. You see a difference? Okay. First thing, remember, learn macro. Learn macro? Economics. Okay. I know at first it is slightly complicated for a lot of beginners, but give it some time. Give it some time. Okay. So the global macro approach okay, involves looking at the big picture. Big picture first, sentiment, intermarket analysis, then economics, politics, societal factors. Certain global macro traders wouldn't look at technical analysis, but personally, I still use technical analysis. Just that it's not my everything. Okay, and then at the end I'll share with you. What is this? What is this? Okay. In the end, I'll share a few words. This because this is very important. You can have one, two, three, but then if you forget point number four, okay, then nothing is going to change. Okay. So later, I'll share a few. One very simple way you can combine fundamental with technical analysis. Okay. Combine fundamental and technical analysis. Right, so what is sentiment analysis? I'm going to go really fast here because I assume you know the basics because there are a lot of experienced traders here. What are you looking for? You are looking for market gauges and indicators to identify positioning of traders. Basically, you want to know are traders bullish or bearish overall? And how do they feel about the markets? Okay? How do they feel about the markets? This is what you want to find out. This is what you want to find out. So there are pros and cons of sentiment analysis. Pros is that it can override fundamental factors. Later I'll show you one example chart and then you'll know why is it that the trend you turn. It can point the start of a new trend. Very important. And weaknesses again later at the end I'll show you. What are the weaknesses? Okay, three types of sentiment. How many types? Three types. Number one, risk on. Meaning people want to take risk. People want to take risk. They are optimistic. Risk off. When you study finance, you come across these two terms. Okay, when you go to study a finance degree, the professor will keep on talking about risk on, risk off. Risk of meaning people are pessimistic, they are risk averse. Okay, and then the third one, people are undecided and confused. Undecided and confused. This means that the chart is going to go sideways. Consolidating is going to go sideways. Okay? Ways to evaluate sentiment. There are short term and long term ways to evaluate sentiment. The first one is a short term way, which is price action. Second one, you can look at the high yield and low yield currencies. Now, what are high yield and low yield currencies? This is very important. Huh? If you study sentiment, High yield meaning high interest rate, low yield meaning low interest rate currencies. Why is this so important? Now, what are the high yield, low yield currencies? Normally, it is the, normally it is the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, and low yield currencies. It will be yen and Swiss franc. If you cannot remember, you can always go to this website. Okay. What you can do is that. You can go to this website called Trading. Oh god, people come and save the mic already. Trading Economics. This is a very simple website, very useful too. Okay, go here. Then go to Indicators. Eh? It's not showing. Ah.
Okay, creating a call mix. Then go to indicators. Then go to interest rate. So this is the G20 countries, countries, okay? So you can see the low yield currencies, high yield currencies. There are several countries. Now, ignore emerging markets. Ignore the emerging markets. Low yield currencies. You see, Japan has been at negative interest rate for a very long time. Then Switzerland used to have negative interest rate. Used to have negative interest rate, Swiss franc. Okay, so these are the two low yield currencies. So what are the low yield currencies? Yen and low yield currencies. Yen. Also understand that these two are known as the safe haven currencies. Actually, USD is also considered safe haven, but it has very high yield right now, so the relationship is a bit complicated. But people still see it as a safe, so-called safe currency. USD, even though it has very high interest rate in the past two years. Then your, then your high yield currencies. How you can see that? Huh? Ignore emerging markets. Ignore emerging markets. Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar. And what else? Oh, the mic's really, yeah. Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and? Ignore the emerging markets, okay? People tend to call this the risk currencies. Not that they are risky, it's just that when people are optimistic, they will buy these currencies. They'll buy these currencies. Because why? These are also called commodity currencies. Why is that? Because Canada exports oil, New Zealand exports agricultural products, Australia exports export what? Iron ore and also gold. And hence, iron ore and gold will move in the same direction as Australian dollar most of the time. Okay? Is this mic better? Better, okay. Then we continue back to the slide. Okay, these two I'm not going to talk about it because it's slightly more complicated, okay? Then social media I also won't recommend, depends on who you follow also. And then, analyst opinion. Now, there are conflict of interest when it comes to analyst opinion. Because if you think about this, if you think about this, let's say if you're an analyst, and then today, personally, based on your own research, you want to recommend a buy trade, okay? And then all the other analysts in the market, they want to recommend a sell trade in order for you to keep your job safe. Is it better for you to recommend a buy trade and be alone or recommend a sell trade? Sell trade. Sell trade. Because you know why? When you are wrong following the crowd, your boss will be like, okay, everybody is the same. When you are wrong, standing alone, your boss asks you, how come you wrong other people, right? Okay, so that's the conflict of interest that a lot of people don't see. And a lot of times, when they recommend you a sell trade, behind the scenes, they might be 
shorting something else to hedge against the position. Okay? So I'm going to talk about VIX today. COT reports. Bond yields I'm not going to cover. Okay? Because we only got a limited amount of time. And then capital flow. Now capital flow is very important because the economy goes through a cycle. Expansion, recession, expansion, recession. Just like summer, autumn, winter, spring. Okay? So when the economy is going through an expansion, expansion, certain asset classes are going to go up, certain asset classes are going to go down. Same thing for recession. And as the economy goes through expansion, recession, expansion, recession, capital is going to flow. Capital is going to flow from high assets to low risk to high risk during expansion, then to low risk. Now this is very important, okay? So that you know at what point in time certain markets are more likely to go up or go down. Okay? Later I'll share with you what specific asset classes will go up during good times and during bad times. So just now I talked about this important sentiment indicator. Okay? Called VIX. What does VIX stand for? Well, can I rub this? Can I rub this? Can? Can? Cannot be rubbed. It's okay. Sometimes the marker is like this. It's called volatility index. There's another name for it. What is it called? Fear index. Fear index. Fear index. Meaning that the higher the I don't think this marker is good. The higher the VIX, the more fear there is. The lower the VIX, this marker is over. Fear index. Lower the VIX, then lower or higher the fear? Lower the fear. Very good. When you look at VIX, look at two things. How many things? Two things. The first one is the number. The number. Is that 20, 30, 40, 10, 15? Okay. First thing is the number. Second thing, look at the chart. This is where your technical analysis comes in. What specific area of the chart? Where's my clicker? Okay, here. Yeah. What specific area of the chart? Support resistance zone. You gotta understand this very important point. VIX tends to test support resistance zones very, very often. Only up to a certain point because as you probably already know, the more it tests S and R, the weaker it becomes. But the more it tests S and R up to a certain point, third to four point, the stronger is the support and resistance zone. Okay. The more it has support resistance zone, the stronger it is, but only up to a certain point. But it has too many times, like five, six, seven, eight times. That's too much right here. Okay? So look at how many things when you look at VIX. Look at how many things? Two things. First thing is the number, second thing is where is it on the chart? Remember to take note when it is testing a major support resistance zone. Okay? Okay, two things, huh? Because you can see two years ago what happened. Test, 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 test. Of course, broke. Support became resistance. And there's one more small one over here. Later, I'll show you what's the implication and how you can use this to trade. Okay, even recently, these past few weeks, 
test, test, draw a trend line, test here, test here. Second, third time still okay. Third time is, I would say, the best time to go in, third time. Okay, sometimes fourth time it will break, sometimes fifth time it will break, it depends, okay? Resistance law, you see, test, test, test. And on the fourth one, it broke slightly, false breakout, came back down. Later, I'll show you how you can trade, okay? Using VIX. But actually, I feel during a risk on environment, during a risk on environment, what kind of asset classes are going to go up? Because during a risk on environment, investors, they would want to seek capital growth. They would want to grow their capital. And hence, what kind of markets are going to go up? Equities. Some are futures options. The risk markets are going to go up. Some are crypto. OK, crypto, I can tell you I'm not super expert in it because I still have a lot to study when it comes to crypto. OK? High yield bonds. High yield bonds. Emerging market, what are the emerging markets? What country is considered inside the emerging market category? Brits, which is? Brazil, Russia, India, China. Now, the thing you need to understand about emerging markets is that they are very prone to inflation very prone to inflation and then also their political situation is not that stable so this is why during good times people will want to take more risk they want to invest into emerging markets and how you can see it's going to go up so all these markets are going to go up during good times okay what are derivatives just now i mentioned already what are derivatives Example, futures options. Okay, during this of environment, instead of wanting to grow the capital, now investors they want to preserve, protect what they have. Protect what they have. Okay, so what kind of markets are going to go up? Money market funds, bonds, gold. U.S. Treasuries. Now the thing is, U.S. Treasury. If you study finance, you realize that a lot of time U.S. Treasuries it is normally used as the risk-free rate. Okay, risk-free rate because people assume that the U.S. government wouldn't default. Okay, just a side knowledge for you. And what kind of markets are going to go up? Low yield countries. Okay, yeah. You have to take a picture. Low yield currencies. So now people don't take notes anymore, just take picture. Is it? Actually, last time in school, I was like that. But make sure when you go home, you copy, you write into a notebook. Okay? Okay, I can move on. Okay, just now I mentioned VIX, you gotta take note of the time when it tests major support resistance. Now take note of these three dates. Take note of these three dates. 17 June 2022, 16 August, 12 October. Okay? Now see, at this point in time when it's testing, what is it testing? Resistance zone. When it goes down now, can you picture in your mind, is the stock market going to go up or go down during this period? During that period, this period, is the stock market going to go up or go down? Uh, up or down? Uh, okay, up. Huh? So picture in your mind, the stock market is going to go like this. Up, then, down, then, up. Mirror image. So you are still not clear, if you are still not clear, okay? But I know you should know already. What is the relationship between VIX and stock market? The relationship is 
I have to rub properly first. What's the relationship between VIX and stock market? Inversely proportional to the what is inversely proportional? Meaning it moves in opposite direction. Okay, follow me. When VIX goes up, stock market goes down. When VIX goes down, stock market goes up. Very good. Look what happened to the stock market. You see it? The same dates I showed you just now. Turning point, turning point, turning point. Okay? Let's say, imagine if you're a technical analysis trader, and then you just look at this U-turn, and then you'll be like, how come it U-turn over here when there's no support zone behind it? If you understand sentiment analysis, you look at this, then you know, oh, okay, more or less you know why did the market U-turn. Of course, some technical analysis traders would say, oh yeah, because of inverted head, head and shoulder over here. Then inverted head and shoulder over here. That's why it U-turn. Oh, because of head and shoulder over here, it U-turn. Then over here, there's an inverted head and shoulder. You can add that to increase your probability, but you can. A faster way is to look at Fix. Okay? How do you combine now this is important uh, this is important <coughs> technique on the share of you. How do you combine fundamental and technical analysis? Okay? So this date of November 2020, what happened during that time? Third of November 2020, that was so long time, four years ago. Time flies, right? Yeah, COVID then. Aside from that? Shut down. Shut down, okay, okay. Aside from that? Not yet open, he called me, okay? What is the main big event that happened on 3rd of November? 2020. US election. US election. Yeah, remember? Who ran for president back then? Biden and Trump. Now, the thing is, uh, 3rd of November 2020, that is when election day is. You can see market came down. A few weeks before election, markets came down because of what? Uncertainty. When there's uncertainty in the market, the stock market is going to go down because there's a certain level of fear. So if you study the many, many past elections, you realize that the stock market, the risk markets are going to go down a few weeks before election. And after election, regardless of whether it's a Republican win, Democrat win, stock market is going to recover. Regardless, a lot of people say, oh, if Democrat wins, if Biden wins, then it's not going to cause the stock market to go up. And yet, if you study the past many, many elections, all the Democrats that got elected, the stock market still recovered. Now, a few weeks before the election, which is over here, 3rd November, VIX spiked, tested resistance zone. Okay, just now it came down, tested this support zone. So you see you can how how you can combine technical and fundamental analysis. Okay. Over here is the election, the November 2020. After election, VIX came back down. Okay, follow me so far. What is going to happen this year, 5th of November 2024? Again, so who is going to run? Trump and? Oh, okay. Trump and Biden. 
Do you know what, ever since Biden got elected, I need to pay US taxes. <laughs> Every month. Every month, even though I don't live there, enjoy the benefits there, I need to pay U.S. taxes every month. Okay, so regardless of who you pick, the stock market is still going to recover. So somebody's going to take advantage of that profit opportunity anyway. Why not let that be? But be careful, be careful. During that period, the stock market is going to be quite volatile. So you cannot put your stock loss like this. Okay, otherwise it was keep on losing money, okay? Be careful. Okay, so let's go to CLT real quick, real quick. How much time do I have left? If I run out of time, do you want me to extend a little bit? Okay, see how much time I have left, huh? I never even start my stopwatch. Okay, never mind. <laughs>